Hello, everyone. Hello, Techheads alike. It's episode 292 Aussie Techheads on the last day of, what is it? Autumn. Last day of autumn, the day before winter. And I'll tell you, winter has sprung up here on the Goldie because it is a bit cold tonight. Raining, cold, and uh, not very good. But anyway, the, the show is back on. I'm uh, back on deck. Good stuff. Now, um, yeah, good. Let's introduce who we've got here tonight with us. It's uh, Will and Eric. Yay. Hello, boys. Hello, mate. Evening. Hello. Um, so, what's been going on with you guys? Will, what's been happening? Anything? Well, I missed... Doesn't look like it's too cold week, where you are. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, lovely and tropical, and I'm sitting on my my front deck having a... No, whatever it is you have, wherever I am. Um, and you're also <laughs> nine. Sorry, no. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little bit. Um, yeah, so I missed you guys last week because when you decided to record uh, Friday, tickets, I was at work. Some yes. of us, you know, have to work occasionally. That's right. Um, Very occasionally. So, but on the upside, nothing's really changed. Hmm. My same. life is still pretty much exactly the same. Same here, same here. Eric, same uh, old, look, same old. Um, Something we had a bit of a drama during the week, but that's not for this show. I'll tell you that I'll tell you that off the air. Okay, so dra- dramas down in Sydney, uh, tropical paradise in <laughs> Anala. Or where, where, oh, where? I don't know. Ipswich. Ipswich. Sorry. Um, and um, I don't know. It, it's not exactly been tropical. We had, we've. I mean, it's been relatively mild for this time of year, but we had um, zero point one. I think it hit twice last week, so it has been getting cool. But yeah, that's pretty cool. But anyway, so let's let's just hope that it's uh, nice weather wherever you are. So welcome to the lounge, high lounge at always at live.thesecrethub.com on a Thursday nights, around about seven thirty, seven forty when uh, we start off. Now you can also watch the videos of the show if you wish on youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. You can call in live if I see the Skype jumping up and down. Just call Aussie Tech Heads. And uh, also the paper twice a day, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. Just subscribe to it, tweet about it, whatever, because there's uh, stories from every, all around the world, all the, all the different stories that may happen. In an, and I'll tell you, it looks really nice on your, on your iPad, on your tablet. So really, really good stuff. Uh, what else is there to say? That's about it, isn't it? Well, let's 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 get straight into it. Why not? There's a lot of news this week for some reason. It's not very, maybe not yeah. as exciting as some weeks, but uh, there is there is quite a bit going on. So uh, I don't know. Where do we want to start? Does anyone want to start, or do you want me to pick a pick one? I might uh, go for it. Well, I might go all the way down to the top. How's that? Sounds good. Might as well start at the top. Now, Sony at binoculars, the humble binocular. Have you guys, Sony has released a CMOS-driven GPS, GPS-tagged, fully 3D digital binocular. Wowzers. That's a mouthful. The binoculars put behind the standard lenses two Exmor CMOS sensors and then replay their input on a digital LCD screen inside the viewfinders. As there's a separation between two lenses, outputting to the eyes separately gives you natural 3D. Woohoo! Yeah. Now the binoculars give uh, are given more functional more functionality like photography and video recording. The Dev Five, which is the the model of these little machines, these little beasts, can record video in A B C H D H dot two six four at ten eighty p in three D. Whoopie do. Um, where's Where's the storage? It takes it records to Memory Stick Pro Duo, and. SD, SDHX, SDXC, and can output the HDMI in 2D and 3D as well as replaying recorded content back to the viewfinder. The, the storage, well, I suppose, whatever your little card is, you stick in it. So it says here 3D approximately 2 hours 40 minutes. Okay, that's reasonable. What's, what, that's what's that's on, the built in, on the built-in memory too. It doesn't actually say in this article, but the, I think it's got, uh, I think they said 8 gig of built-in. Um yeah. And yeah, it records in either 1080p normal or 1080p twice, one from each lens. So if you want to cut down on how much you're recording, then you just record through one lens instead of both. Right. Does, will that work? I suppose it would. Yeah. Right. Well, you can either record 2D or 3D, so you just turn the lens on and off. Yeah, that's um, right. Yep. 3D that's pretty cool. It's, actually, yep. it's, it's good because it's got a hot shoe, so you can put a big... Uh, a big LED light on something if you want to brighten the area up. 
Um, there now, has been a couple of attempts at recorded uh, recording um, binoculars before, but generally they've been being pretty ordinary. I've got an old pair of I can't believe, reasonable brand, um, but they had a really dodgy little 360k CMOS camera that only recorded like it was sitting on the front of the lens. It wasn't mm. even recording through the viewfinder. So you, you weren't recording the magnified image. Right. right. So, so these little things. Question, really. question. I, I'm assuming this is a tripod uh, connector, standard tripod connector, because yeah. I'd hate to uh, hold this up to my face <laughs> full time. <laughs> yeah, they've got a, a, a tripod or monopod or whatever you want to use. Mm. Um, there's also a remote control, so you can set it up. Is it got and, a viewfinder, so you can step away from it? Well, not a viewfinder well, per se, eye, but it does things. have remote, so you can set your shot and then use the remote to... Well, it's got the LCD screen inside the view... Oh, yes. So you're saying... Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like an external viewfinder, like a video I mean, camera. Into it. It's got HDMI, so I guess you could plug a, a small screen into it, but... Hmm. But anyway, um, Jay, all right, all right, I'm predicting this won't sell. <laughs> Not for two grand. I think that's a little bit rich. Two ninety nine. Um, you might get a few, you know, hobbyists and some was, king, tiny people. But if it was five or six hundred bucks, yeah. You know what? Um, for two grand, I can buy a Canon Mark. Uh, Canon Mark. Uh, what's it? Mark two. Five D. Five D. Five D Mark two for two thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah. And it does absolutely everything except three D, of course. But who cares? Yeah. Um, I think I'd know where I'd be spending my money. Hmm. Well, that's what I don't understand. And they actually don't mention anywhere either um, what the focal distance of the... Correct. Uh, yeah, is, it, is there any mention of the optical zoom and the digital zoom specs on it? Well, well not in, no the, zoom. in this article. Yeah. Not Nothing in. I could find. I had a look on their website. And well done, well website. done, Sony. And we wonder and you wonder why you're using billions per year. That's excellent. <laughs> But look, it is it is available from Sony now, retailing at uh, nineteen ninety nine. So obviously, go to the Sony shop and ask him all about it. But but then again, I haven't had much luck in going to the Sony shop myself personally. No. Oh, look, no, every time I go in there, they run the other way and they ignore you because you 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 you're um, encroaching on their uh, socialising time. Yeah, you might want to. Yeah, yeah I found that up something. here. That's what I mean. Yeah, I found that up here. And wow. that's, if, this happened to me about four years ago, and I haven't been back to the shop since. I was looking to buy two Sony Bravia 40-inch um, TVs, and he ignored me. So I thought, <laughs> okay. So I went up to JB Hi-Fi and got it from them. Well, you know, I did exactly the same thing. I went in there to buy a Sony Handycam, the one that I use, and got just jack. Just got Jack, right? No, oh, yes. no. I ask questions, um, no answers. Just sort of, oh, maybe, yeah, I think so. Maybe there. Nah. So I just went, all right. So I went to JB, got it cheaper anyway. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, but anyway, I don't, I don't know what's going on with them. But I'm just on their website looking. It doesn't say anything more. That it actually has less information on than that article had. And uh, it's there's no optical. There's no optical. I'm on here as well, and there's no optical. Uh, there's no nothing. It's got no information at all on it. All I've got is the print. megapixels per still, megapixels depending on size, um, recording length if it's 2D or 3D. It's I love the fine print, day. though. It says prices may vary for the same product in a different color. Right. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good story. All you right, can well, have any one. You can, the black one's ninety nine nine, but if you want a different one, well, yeah, that's, that's going to cost you five grand. <laughs> We've got to go out the back and Sorry paint about it. about that. Yeah. We've got to go on liquid paper all over it, so that's time and effort. <laughs> That'll be an extra, yeah, 200 And all prices right. are subject to change for that notice. Thanks for coming. All right, well, let's move off that thing then. Now, because yeah. <laughs> I saw that I, I think Eric had a tablet story, and I've got a tablet yes, story. Do. Well, you, I take, do you do your tablet story. Cause I, 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 I quite got a... I get I got excited about this tablet story, even though I think Russell Kogan is a bit of a. Well, I won't say what he is because he might listen to this. Everyone um, listens to this, of course. He's listening. Yeah, everyone listens to this. Six thousand downloads a week can't beat it. Now, Mr. Kogan has brought in an Android four tablet. What's that ice cream sandwich, Will? Yep. Yep. From one seventy nine for the eight gig, and one ninety nine for the sixteen gig. The specs mm -hmm. are pretty good. Camera's a bit dodgy. Two megapixel front and back. 
probably go you could probably go a little bit better on that. One gig of RAM is pretty good. Um, yeah, that's actually screen. the camera's not, a typo. It's actually a two meg on the back and one meg on the front. Oh, so it's worse. <laughs> but I mean, you only use the front camera for video conferencing and stuff, so that's fine. Yeah, but one meg, I don't know. I'd want to get a bit. Well, that's just me. But anyway, um, it's not a Retina display. It's only it's only ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. So that'd be equivalent to an iPad or... iPad two, I'd imagine. No. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, that most which phones. Is, which is fine. That's right. Um, they they've listed the battery out life as eight hours. I doubt if it'll be eight hours. It'd probably be closer to six. I do like the uh, well. It's one point two gig processor, so that's just on the acceptable limit. But I like the multi touch. It's one of the for the price of the tablet. It's almost impossible to find anything even remotely the same price with multi touch. Now tell me, on the multi touch, isn't there a a patent dispute with Google and Apple on this multi touch? No, probably. <laughs> There's disputes. Tell you what, disputes all over the place. I think it is. I think there is, but um, you know, Google doesn't give a rat's patoot. So yeah, that's it. But look, well, I like um, the fact that it's got HDMI, um, mm. USB, micro SD, so you can you can you know increase your storage. So that's I like that aspect. And look, for two hundred bucks, Wi-Fi only. That's okay. Yeah, that's um, all right. I tell you yeah. what, it'd be a good Christmas present for some kitties. Well, yeah, yeah. you've got to think too, like it's, it's Wi-Fi only, but it supports, because it's got USB, you can run a USB dongle for 3G if you want 3G. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hang on. But the, but the 3G dongle's got to have the Android software. Most generic dongles will work pretty much straight up. I've got, uh, I've got a Dodo one, an Optus, a Telstra, and just a generic eBay one, and all of them work without any issue at all. Because I've got um, the Telstra 4G... Um, I haven't tried the 4G mm-hmm. one, by the way. And I don't think that has it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, actually. Yeah, I don't... I don't it doesn't think, matter. I've got the no. phone. You've got to hotspot it, so that's cool. Well, that's the other option, too. Um, I love the fact it's running ice cream sandwich. Hopefully, it's a fairly vanilla version of that, not some hyped-up version of it. Yeah, yeah, um, I know what you mean. You don't know extra skins on it. Yeah. Samsung. Um, there's also a 16-gig version available for 199 So for the sake of an extra 20 bucks, you get double the memory. So I, think, as well. I think that would be worthwhile for an extra 20 Oh, hell yeah. Um, yeah. Or $200, not, not $100, but not $20. Um, is it 199 no, ones no, left? $199. $20? Is yeah. that a typo? No. Once it, for $20? Oh, I'm, I'm sure then. No, yeah, then that's why the 16-gig on their website has been sold out. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, not going to spend it. Was sold out like what idiot, minutes after it went what idiot wouldn't fork out the extra $20? Yeah, that's it, you know. Um, so I think it's fine. And the good thing about the Android, obviously it's upgradable, customizable, but um, it charges off standard micro USB. So not only do you transfer your data to backup and whatever, you can also charge it just by plugging it into your computer, any generic car charger. Um, I guess the, so the biggest issue with it is it's... 1.2 gig. So in the scheme That's of things, okay because because the um the the iPad three is only 1.3. Um, yeah, I mean 1.2 is my phone. My HTC HTC Desire is 1.2 gig. So that's 18 month old now. So that's sort of yeah, it's sort of old. Somewhere technology. somebody's bought out somebody's bought out a 27 inch touchpad thing. Um, <laughs> Put that in but, your pocket. Good, good God! But it's that's my next like story. A, calm down, calm down. That's my next story. Processor in it or something. So, but yeah, as I said, um, not only will you find a ten-inch tablet, you won't find a multi-touch tablet for this price. At least not anything worth worrying about. Um, and it's true multi-touch, so it's unlimited. So you can put all ten fingers on it, and it'll recognise all ten. So wow. Well, well, speaking of ten fingers, ten inches. How about a twenty-two incher? 20? Oh, that's it, 22 inch. Yeah. What, what movies have you been watching, Glenn? <laughs> oh, well, you could you watch should anything. Have heard him before the show. <laughs> you, could, you could watch anything you liked on this 22 inch, I'll tell you. You just, you just, you just put it on you the Just whip it out. You just whip the, it out and, and, and you put the pro- projector onto it. You could, you could just put it on the table and you could, you could just damn put anything on it. It's a view Sonic. Watch it all day. It's a, it's a view Sonic and I, I might have a photo, but for those of you who care, but it's a 22 inch. 
what, what's the brand? ViewSonic. It's on sale uh, oh. on a slate. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I've got all, all excited. <laughs> now, ViewSonic is set to introduce a 22... This is shocking. This is, this is not going to work. A 22-inch... <laughs> Uh, slate on the June the fifth at the Computex oh, in Taipei. Oh, Texas Instrument Processor. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, it's slow. Oh, it come is. on, give it right. a go. Hey, Glenn, I tell you what, you, you go and buy it, turn it on, and then when we come back next week to the show, it'll, it'll just be booting yeah, up. Yeah, just leave it no, booting up. I mean, it's actually it's faster than the Pando Pad, and the Pando Pad will play HD movies, um, and most of the the basic games and most of the apps. So. Um, I guess if you look at it like that, you look at it, it's, it becomes a cheap media center. I suppose if you're a uni student, for example, and you know, it's not, I can't, you've got the price in front of you there, Glenn, but it's I not just that expensive. I just get to freaking drop it. No, well, there's one no, inch. It. There's no Jesus. price as yet. It just hasn't been uh, released yet. But, okay. it's, but it's a 22 inch VCD 22 tablet arriving, will arrive packing a 21.5 inch full HD display. As uh, Eric yeah. said, Texas Instruments, I thought they died like 20 years ago. Are they still Not seriously? They, they will they after make this. a lot of chips. <laughs> they, they will after this. It's a one gigahertz dual core. Yeah, uh, powering uh, the Android four ice cream sandwich. One point two mega <laughs> camera. Funny. Bit bit lameish. That's completely different specs to what I've got here for the same device. Well, this one this one might be updated. Will. Well. Yeah, it um, could be. Mine's a week. The story I've got's a week old. So HDMI port with three USB ports. So um, mm. there you go. And. Bearing in mind, too, that Android supports keyboard, mice, and things like that. So you can actually plug a normal keyboard and a normal mouse into it and use it like that. I mean, it, yes, it is a touchscreen as well, but if you didn't want to, um, you know, you can use it as, you can basically use it as a, you know, a media center or a PC to, to some degree, I suppose. Mm. If it's only a couple hundred dollars, you know, if it's three or four hundred bucks, it's the same price as a netbook and it's probably more versatile. Yeah, look, know, it's I, big. I don't think I'd like to. I don't think I'd like a tablet that big. No, good well, luck reading. A, good luck reading a book on it. But it's probably something that you'd probably take in your briefcase to a meeting, would you? And, and so you could just sit it on a stand and just show your. your so people like just laugh at, I mean, so people would laugh at you and throw garbage. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that camera I just switched to, but it's the same size as my laptop screen I've got sitting here. That's what um, I mean. But. For me, it would actually be perfect because I could actually touch it, click and drag and manipulate from here. At the moment, I've got to run either a Synergy program or reach over here to use the keyboard and mouse. So, I mean, I think it definitely does have a. a You're going to have to move. You get that tablet. Where are you going to put it? You're going to have to move. I put it on top of. I put it on top of my other monitor up here because I've got. I don't know. I you go. Velcro it and hang it around your neck. I can go vertical. I've got plenty more room. <laughs> you know that's that's what will happen, isn't it? They'll they'll put these on two. They'll put get two of them on a string like in the apex, and, and people would down the street will wear them like the, the end of the world is nigh. You know, hey, one you on the front, the, one on the back. Do the you love the gang. Thing. You know the gang that got the big clocks. They have the big screen. <laughs> you can do the portal thing and have one on the front and one on the back, and have it, the other one displaying the other one's camera. So it's like you're looking straight through. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Very good, Will. Very good. Oh, very good. Geez. You should you should you should pitch that to an ad agent, some idiot ad, ad agency who will go for it. And go, oh, good idea, mate. Then they'll do. They'll make the ad outside an Apple store. <laughs> they'll, do, they'll do one of those. What are those? What remember that ad they did with? Um, hey, I'm dude, a, you're, 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 I need my creativity, dude. You're a barista. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, well, that, that's that's the that's what's going on in tablets. All right, so, all right two products stuff. that are not going to sell. What's the next product? <laughs> okay. Well, this one. Well, actually, you've got a you've got one that I've never liked. A BlackBerry story. Do you want to? Go on with that. Oh, one. look, look, this is. This well, we're is, talking to things that don't this sell. Is the, this is the death of BlackBerry. BlackBerry maker Research in Motion has hired a team of bankers with That's a B it. That's to it. help its way its options as this business erodes in the faces of an exodus to iPhone and Android smartphones. You know what? Bankers are probably the last people you should be calling to get ideas about how to um, resuscitate your business because they're good money people, but I don't know if they're very good ideas people. Anyway, Grimm issued a dire warning about its business Tuesday, saying it is losing money for the second consecutive quarter and lay off a significant number of employees. Yep, that's um, finished. Grimm just... made no mention of selling the company, but there was some rumours a few weeks ago that Microsoft were going to buy it and put their um, Windows 
eight on it. Oh yeah, which is probably not a bad idea. No. Look, I I just don't like the because look the, with Rim keyboard. the hardware is fantastic except for the you know people some people don't like the the physical keyboard. No, I don't. They like make it. really good hardware. Mm. You know, look solid, good quality, robust. Hardware. Yeah, it's very, very good quality really hardware. Impressive. But their operating system is a piece of crap, mm. and that's why it's not selling. Is it touchscreen as well? Must be. They have touchscreen ones. That one's the first touchscreen one, one was a Storm, which was a piece of pus. This is the Blackberry Bold. I've got one of these. I just, um, sitting in the cupboard somewhere, not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's very sad. They just didn't. They just didn't keep up with it. You know, they they took it. They took it for granted that people were never going to come in and, and, and challenge them. And mm, mm. 2007 is when it all started. Well, I think I, mean, I think that everyone was resting on their laurels, weren't they? Nokia. They were included. Nokia as well. Yeah. Nokia is effectively bankrupt. Yeah. Well, um, Nokia had like ninety percent of the market share at one point. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Between it was between Nokia and 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 Rim really, and but the but the the amazing thing is Rim still has seventy eight million users. Mm. But 78. most. But, Probably seventy-seven and a half million of those are business. Government, the government, yeah, a lot of yeah. governments because because of the security. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, that's it. The lockdown email the lockdown. and things like yeah, that. Exactly. Well, also, um, also really, now, the Australian government only until recently were all on blackberries. Yeah, right. Okay. So, you know, that's right. Yeah, because you know, now they, they've authorized. They're, the on, use I, of they're the, on iPhones now. They've authorized yeah. iPhones. They've done a security. They've added their own software to make it secure and all that sort of stuff. But mm. yeah, but prior to I think four weeks ago, the Australian government was all BlackBerry. So that, as soon as they all go iPhones, how many, how many? And there's a hundred thousand users you're going to lose. Does Apple throughout government? Does Apple work with um, like governments to or, or businesses yes. for that matter to create yeah, they do. and modify the um, iOS? Yeah, as long as they pay them. Yeah. You don't modify the iOS. What they do is they. They have a back-end system that, that plugs into your, you say, Exchange server mm. that um, allows you to um, keep track of all iPhones that are plugged into the system anywhere in the world and to wipe and erase them anywhere if, if they get lost. They're very secure. A friend of mine, uh, actually he's not a friend of mine, he's my brother-in-law. He's a, um, he's a partner of uh, Ernst & Young, the accounting firm, and they, were, they've got, they went from BlackBerry to iPhone and they just put their own software on it because they've got an internal um, Apple gives you uh, enterprises um, development licenses right yeah and they help you develop in-house security and software and plugins and no, all yeah. sorts of things yeah, right. and so he's using an iPhone and it's via it's it, it, and he goes through the Ernst and Young um, software that's on the on the on the screen yeah yeah, yeah okay. I think the reason is the only reason BlackBerry is still hanging on is because whether it be governments or universities or a lot of those, you know, older institutions take so long to process stuff. So a government changing from BlackBerry to iPhone or whatever they choose to change to is going to go through five years of R&D to make sure the software is compatible, that it doesn't crash, yeah, that there's yeah. no security for it. So from the time something's imp or well, something's accepted to the time something's implemented can be you know five or seven year turnaround so we're just starting to see that now so if you think the iphone for example got popular in you know what 2009 here 2000 yeah uh, 2008 was the first release here so you know we're looking pretty much smack on that five year now where we're just starting to rotate into that so i think that's pretty much all going to be downhill for BlackBerry, unfortunately. I, th I think so. Well, it's just taking time now. Well, when you think about it, in, in America, um, something like 70% or more of the top 500 companies are either using iPhones or uh, looking at developing mm. for iPhones and probably Androids as well. So, you know, they're, they're, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, they're gone. finished. They're finished. friends up here in the uh, education department, they're all using Androids. Yeah, well, there you um, go. So they've been given clearance, obviously. Mm. Well, they've got their own special education apps and there's yeah, all this that's stuff. That's right, log in and VPN into the system or whatever they need to do. Yeah, mm. and uh, yeah, I think, look, you know, every, every rollout takes time, as as Frosty said in the chat room. I mean, some government agencies, are not, a lot of them still are, using Windows XP. Uh, Centrelink, for example, last time I went in there, they were still on XP. After, and even they spent millions of dollars rebuilding the Goodner office after the floods. 
put XP. all brand new, flashy everything in, and yeah. they still were running XP. So once again, it's that whole. They still have the but, trusted you know, uh, IE six running. Yeah. Did you get yeah, that close to it? <laughs> you know, it's that whole implementation process, and that's the it only reason time. companies are still surviving, like BlackBerry. Mm. That's right. Um, so we'll, people have so. switched yet. We're talking about uh, iPhones. There's more rumours. The nine to five Mac has appeared to be if the... this. If this is the iPhone, <laughs> I'm not freaking buying it. Not because it's the size. I don't mind the size, and I don't mind the slimness and all that sort of stuff. But they have put the um, headphone under here. If that's right. true, underneath. Underneath, have they? Oh, really? Yes. Have a look at the pictures. There it is. They've, so they've gone to mini USB for charging, right? Because yeah. that's the European yeah. standard now. They have to do that. But what about Europe. all the docking and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, well, too bad. You lose it all. You're screwed. No. Well, no, it'll all just go through USB or Bluetooth, probably. Yeah. So see that thing there? What about all those that devices? Jack. That's the, unless this thing I've got that wrong and the headphone jack is still at the top and they've moved the, the, the charger to the top. Yeah, well, well, I was going to say, if Sony's phone's got the charger on top of it, so... Well, it doesn't make any sense. See those dots there underneath? Those dots, they're the speakers and the microphone. Well, it makes sense for yeah. speakers to be on top. They speak when you talk. The speakers on the bottom? Oh, that's bigger. The, yeah, the, 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 the microphone and speaker for the, you know, here and whatnot. Well, the article... the current microphone, that's exactly where it is. So if you look at that, right? Yeah, hang it's on. Different, it's a different, confi- um, different shape and different mm. um, look. But they're on the bottom. So I'm thinking, well, they've done the same thing. They put it on the bottom, but now they put the headphone jack there. If this is right, I'm not buying it. Because how can you plug it in anywhere? Although, on my on a lot of it, the earlier Android phones that only had... Well, mine's taped up because my case is falling off because I keep dropping it. But there's a headphone socket on top. But on the earlier ones, there was no headphone socket. They used the headphone socket through the USB port. So, of course, right. if the USB port was on the bottom of the phone, it also meant that your headphones so you can only, were on the bottom well, of the phone. Well, what about if you, want to, if you want to charge it and listen to it at the same time? You can't. Uh, you could. Yeah, yeah there's a two-into-one adapter. A two-into-one. Okay. Um, but it actually worked out well for me because I actually ended up carrying the phone upside down because I carried it in my top pocket a lot for the particular job I was doing. And I just carried it upside down in my top pocket. So it sort of didn't really make any difference, you know. Um, it drive me mad. Because yeah. the first iPod Touch had the had the microphone down the bottom, and it used to give me the shits. Well, this the the nine to five Mac appeared. Uh, well, they they reckon they're the first to publish that shot. The 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 picture of it. The shape is fairly similar to the current iPhone four and four S models, except that uh, except that with a smaller dock connector, as we've been talking, and larger speakers. The site also told that the back is made from aluminium alloy, so it hasn't really gone into. You know that the mic, the headphone jack is on the bottom or anything like that. But look, as with everything, they, these just are probably just mock-ups. Do you reckon? Like well, just. I hope so. I really do hope so because if I won't it, be buying it. But I how many? Not buy it. Yeah. Do you reckon this could be the first failing of uh, Jobsy's demise? Well, Tim Cook. Yeah, yeah, Tim. Could if they've done this. Look, you know what? It's just I find it hard to believe that Johnny I would let this through. He's the. He, Lead design, he would have gone no freaking way yeah. wasn't it there. Look, they probably released it as a prototype just just to hype up everything. Because isn't it when's when's the when's it going to be? Um, uh, well, it'll be available launched? in October, so they've got a few months. June or something next month, tomorrow. Oh, they'll announce Not tomorrow, it in June, but, but, they but don't, it won't be for sale till October. Yeah, so this is just all probably just hype building up to the announcement. Oh, you know what this could be? This could be clever a clever leak to get um, some uh, feedback. Go, oh, gee, they're talking about it. everyone's bagging this bloody iPhone, uh, this earphone thing on the bottom. Nah. We'll, um, we'll retool and uh, we'll make sure we won't bring it out like that. Yeah. I think by now they'd have to have that locked in. It'd be too late in the schedule, surely, to change all that now. No, not really. When you pretty much own Foxconn, you can do it your life. Well, that's true, yeah. Mm. So, um, all right, so that's good. So now what we're going to do now is it's time to have a little hear from Garth. So Garth has come in through the week and he's done another little ios review now this week i think he's talking about an apple app of all things who'd have thought apple makes their own apps but um <laughs> let's have a here and uh, we'll cross over and see what garth's doing uh this week once again with you guys and garth for another ios app 
review. What do you got, Gaff? Hey, Glenn. Tonight hey. we're looking at Apple TV. No, we're not. What are we talking about? Yeah. We're looking at the remote. <laughs> remote. <So, laughs> the iPhone. So if you've got an Apple TV or if you've got your iTunes library hooked up to your TV or your stereo system, whatever, um, if you want to be able to control that library from somewhere else in the house, so you've got it playing through an Airport Express, um, the Apple, this is an app put out by Apple themselves. Yep, okay. Um, it's one of their own apps. And all it does, it's just a remote control for your, for your iTunes library. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so let's have a look at a little screen grab here. So, okay, so, so you're remote controlling your iTunes library and you're sending it to any AirPlay device. Is this this Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So the way I've been using it personally myself is hooking up my computer to my TV, the old uh, MacBook Air, plug it into the TV, sit back with my iPhone and I can control what's happening on the TV, what's happening on that through, through the iPhone. Nice. So play, pause, jump back, you can set play, you can create playlists, um, genius playlists, you can basically, yeah, you can control, it's just gives you a win, uh, you know, the ability to control your library remotely. Okay, so, yeah, so, for, um, so you don't have an Apple TV, but I'll, I've no. got an Apple TV and yeah. uh, well, you should have this app. Yeah, but everything's coming with the AirPlay, the AirPlay now anyway, like, but yeah. you can, uh, you can send anything, even for, within iTunes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can send it to the AirPlay. Oh, you can AirPlay right from your iPad anyway, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. oh, so you can't do the AirPlay straight from, what, your iPhone? Well, see, I've got, in this case, um, I've got my iTunes library going straight from my computer to my TV. Right. So, my, so rather than going over to my, my computer's hooked up to my TV, right? Yep. So rather than getting out of the couch and going over to the computer and pressing play, right, I right. can press play from my phone. If I had that content, yeah, if I, I'd need an Apple, if I had an Apple TV, I'd have that hooked up to my... So you'd bypass the computer. I'd bypass the computer, that's right. Right, so this is pretty much just, just remote controlling your computer. Yeah, or yeah. anything else. Yes, yes. Pretty much. <laughs> so, but... It, for me, it's it's useful in remote controlling my computer. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So um, anything on the same Wi-Fi network, basically. Right. Right. Control iTunes to send music to AirPlay speakers. Control volume on each speaker independently. Uh, use simple gestures to control Apple TV and a text with the keyboard. Control shared libraries on iTunes and the new Apple TV. So mm. there's an easy thing. Then with your Apple TV, and you've got to try and do a search. You've got to do that whole arrow around and find all the different. Oh letters. yes. Yep. Yep. To just be able to, you know, type it in straight from the keyboard. That's right. Anything. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, or you can play them from the iCloud with the iTunes Match on Apple yep. TV. Anywhere in your home, you can change a song, pick a playlist, browse it, your entire library with a flick of your finger. Mm, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, keep tapping to play, fast forward, rewind, and pause. Nice. That, but that Apple TV, I'll tell you. Since I've hooked that up, that is just one of the most amazing things. Um, yeah, yeah, from you really love it, eh? Oh, I do, I do. Yeah. Like, you, I can just one of those buggers. Well, I've got a TV right just you know in the in the in my office where I'm just a, a, across from me. Mm -hmm. I can sit here. I, I load up the iTunes and Apple, and I can send it to the Apple TV. Yeah, I, I can control what's on the TV from my computer here. Yeah, I can control it from my iPad. I can re I can re-display whatever's on my iPad screen to the to the Apple to TV. To the Apple TV, yeah, that's beautiful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, which now which I've also worked yeah, yeah. out, which I can also now I've got the media, the Windows Media Center inside recording yep. free to air, right? Then it's getting stored on the server. Now I've got this application for the iPad that will take will that I can view it on the iPad, right? The mm -hmm. the Media Center. Recording, you, yep, and then you can chuck that, and then I can Apple just TV. chuck it to the Apple TV. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's all working. So <laughs> integrating that sounds is pretty complicated, amazing. but it actually just works, right? <laughs> it does. It just works, and it is great. It is yeah. great. But anyway, so what's that one? That one is the remote. Just do a search for remote. That one is remote, and, and it's free from Apple. Free from Apple. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. We'll see you next week. Good night. Thanks, guys. All right. There we go. The remote. Good stuff. Now, um, well done, Garthy. You can uh, you can see Garth's reviews just uh, in their their individuality or singularity or whatever the word is. <laughs> so, uh, if you go to the Aussie Tankheads dot com, what? A ball? A ball? Yeah, in the singularity. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, so his reviews they're up on the uh, yeah Aussie Tech Ed's website uh, if you want to quickly go back and check them out. Now, um, so that was good. Thank you, Garth. Now, Eric, I think you've got a audible review. I do indeed. Would this be true? This would be true. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 What 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 are you uh, listening to, or or recommending this week? I'm not sure if I've um, recommended this in the past or not. Hence the two choices. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I looked at your choices, and I don't right. think so. Okay. Um, this audio book is called Liar's Poker. Let me just scroll down to my notes. And it's written by a guy called uh, Michael Lewis, who is also um, the author of Moneyball, which was turned into a movie starring Brad Pitt and a couple of other people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Great movie. Fantastic movie. Go see the movie. Yeah. Seriously. Fantastic movie. Go and see it if you haven't seen it already. Especially for um, those other people. Especially yeah. with, with other people, mm. starring other, other people. people. Oh, it's great. Um, so this book is about uh, rising through the wreckage on Wall Street. This is about Wall Street in the 80s. And basically, Wall Street, the movie, was semi-based on this book. Right. In, you know, with Charlie Sheen and, and oh, yeah. um, Martin Sheen and, and uh, Gordon, you know, Gordon Gecko. Um, so it was semi, semi-based on this book. And it is, it is a good – I've read the actual physical book. Um, nice. The paper book mm. on this. I read it years ago. Probably read it twenty years ago. Um, and this is the audio book. Oh and, yeah. Uh, if you like, I will share this screen. And there it is. There. And uh, here we go. All oh, right. Tell me if you can hear. The... It's has it started yet? Yes. Not, not oh. hearing. And double bluff. There we go. The code of the liars poke. Whoop. Here we go. Go on. The hard part is reading the faces of the other players. The complexity arises when all players know how to bluff and double bluff. The code of the liar's poker player was something like the code of the gunslinger. It required a trader to accept all challenges. Because of the code, which was his code, John Merriweather felt obliged to play. But he knew it was stupid. For him, no upside. If he won, he upset good friend. But if he lost, he was out of pocket a million bucks. No, John, Merriweather said. I'd rather play for real money. Ten million dollars, no tears. Ten million dollars. It was a moment for all players to savor. Merriweather was playing Irish poker before the game even started. He was bluffing. Good friend considered the counterproposal. It would have been just like him to accept Merely to entertain the thought was a luxury that must have pleased him well. It was good to be rich. I think it's always good to be rich. <laughs> what they say? Money doesn't buy happiness, but, uh, geez, it buys a lot of comfort. And I think, have we lost everyone? <laughs> I think we've lost Eric. Will? Oops, no, I'm here. Oh, Will? Sorry, no. I'm here. No, sorry. Yeah, my microphone was turned down. Uh, I was muted. That's what I did too. Uh, no, you're right. Money doesn't buy happiness, but if I had a choice between um, miserable and poor or miserable and rich, I know which one I'd take. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh, you need just to put your camera back, thanks. And, yeah, so that's good. So I'm still waiting for the, the Wall Street Money Never Sleeps to come onto uh, the uh, tea box. Why, why wouldn't that be the first one's there, the second one's not there? ITunes, it's on iTunes. It's on iTunes. Yeah, well, but I've but got you, a, you don't you, you don't want to pay for it. Well, I've got a credit on the tea box. Runs out in a, mu- in a month. Oh, it's surprising it's there. Yeah, I know. Hmm. So am I. Oh, anyway. the, the other book to that is called Boomerang, which I, I've also got, which is, and he, this is about the GFC in 2008. Yes, right. And Wall Street number two with Money Never Sleeves is based also on GFC 2008, but not necessarily on this book. Mm, yeah, okay. That so, is also a great movie. Yeah, what the the Boomerang? No, Wall Street number two. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't seen it. I haven't, I'm, you don't I'm actually. I might. Um, hang on. I'll see if I've got it for you. Let me see. So, um, I think I might have it. Well, while Eric's looking there. No, I don't have it. Sorry, mate. I thought I did. That's all right. Look, I'm. I'm just about. I'll have to go down and borrow it from the damn video shop. Old school or what? But uh, or uh, even I might just just, uh, just. I'll just say one thing. If you go down to the video shop. Yeah. One word. Yep. Handbrake. 
Right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll, I'll explain later. Oh, I know what you're saying. I think I know where you're going. Yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, so... Yeah, so look, I can always probably just download on off the iTunes anyway because that's what I, that's what I got. Well, Quick Flix, that's that's here. So I'm, I can do that. Quick Try Flix, it out with yes. that. Yeah, so good. So uh, yeah, so Audible, you can if you want a free Audible book upon signing up for this great service, you can and uh, just go to AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage and click on the link, sign up, and you will get your first book for free. All right, good stuff. Now, where are we now? Now I've got another story here. This was a uh, quite an interesting one. It's sort of brings home the fact that people are out there and they do read your Facebook. So make sure that you, how would you actually log into Facebook? How could you ensure that your privacy is actually working? You know, your privacy setting. Can you log in, uh, apart, if you get a friend to check your profile, well, that's no good because, you know, they're, they're your friend. Um, how would you, you check? Can do, what you do is, um, uh, what you call it, you log out of Facebook and then you go to a browser and just type in your name on a Google search and see if it comes up. Because right. if it's public, if it's public, your um, your go- your Facebook profile will come up. Okay, right. Okay. Well, so leading into this story is the there's the family of a 17 year old girl was robbed after their daughter uploaded a photo of a pile of cash to Facebook. Now, two well, that's uh, smart. Yeah, it, it was a bit of a well. I don't know if the pile that was actually in this article, the picture of the file was uh fair income it was just a you know a stock photo but oh geez there's a couple of 50s now two men armed with a knife and a wooden club broke into a bundled bundled bunda noon bunda noon home bunda noon that's down south near and barrel in the near, down near milo where milo lives down here down down south that way somewhere so in the southern highlands last week demanding to speak with the unnamed girl about the cash the girl had been helping her grandmother count her life savings in sydney earlier in the day when she posted the photo of the undisclosed sum of cash to, the, to facebook at 11:30 p.m several hours after the photo was uploaded the men entered the girl's residence where she no longer lived the men searched the house stole a small amount of cash no one was injured uh, which is good now uh, police inspectors were unable to disclose how the girl's family address was known so that's a, that's probably another interesting little thing unless She's put it up on the Facebook somewhere, but maybe it was an in-house job. But anyway, Facebook maybe inside job. Yeah, but if if anyone uh, has any news about that, about the people who who broke in, they're they're required or expected to go and talk to the police. There we go. That's our community service announcement. It would week. be much appreciated. It would um, be <laughs> if you. Uh, Ring the police because, the, as they always say, the police, we're interested in talking to these two individuals as they may help us with our inquiries. Exactly right. Now, I've got another... Yeah, because if we can beat them around the head enough and get them to confess, then yeah. it makes their job easier. Hmm. Best, <laughs> you know, the best way to um, beat someone up and not and not be accused of beating them up? Phone book. <laughs> Phone book them. Phone book them. <laughs> book them, don't I? Now, Windows 8, it's, look, we're going to start talking more and more oh, about this, no. I guess. Oh, why? Eric not, doesn't like it. Not Windows 8. Windows 8. Windows well, 8 is so boring. Well, it, it, probably the screens actually do look boring. I'll, I'll give you that. They don't look appealing at all. God knows why they why they can't jazz it up with a bit you of know, colour or something. Because who's the, who's, who are their designers? Engineers, that's who. That's the it, it must be. Look, look. I've got a screenshot here for those on the on the bid. So what this story is all about is that the Windows 8 has got a really fast boot, really fast boot, like seven second boot. So if this is if you we'll, we'll see. This is if you've got an Optimum laptop with or PC with SSDs and all this sort of stuff. But for the first time in decades, you will no longer be able to interrupt the boot sequence and tell your PC to do anything differently than what it was already expected to do. So how do we get into the BIOS? That's right. That's exactly right. Well, the BIOS you can still get into because that's that's separate. That's that's the boot that's done on boot up. But as for, from what I can gather, if you need to go to recovery mode or safe mode or something like that, you just put the the CD or the uh, flash drive back in and boot through no, it that way. Not touching it. So we so this is a so from from the Windows 8 team we have SSD based UEFI systems where the F8 window is always less than 200 milliseconds. No matter how fast your fingers are, there's no way to reliably catch a 200 millisecond event. The team has created failover behaviors which automatically bring up the boot options menu when problems arise during boot up. In addition, users will be able to reach 
to easily reach the boot options menu at any time they like, according to uh, to Microsoft. Instead of these menus, in, instead of these menus and options being interrupt driven, they are triggered in an international intentional way that is much easier to accomplish successfully so what the hell does that mean so that means that i suppose that there's you know you you, you can bring up the boot sequence or the boot instructions or whatever at any particular time i I guess like this is so this screen here we've got your options now i've got an advanced option screen but talk but as eric said the video eric said it talk about boring video talk about boring so look at that my five-year-old could have designed a better screen than that, for God's sake. It's just even, it's like... That is shocking. Two colours. It's like they were screen printing and wanted to just, save money. It's like, it's rubbish. Screen print, it's just, it's not even 2D, it's 1D. Yeah, get with it. But anyway, I do, <laughs> anyway, I do, look, I do have a video from a nice young girl from Microsoft who is uh, on the, some kernel operations or something like that. Now she's, uh, or video and audio, obviously. Now she's just quickly demonstrating how fast the boot sequence is. And if I can get that video up and going, we can uh, have a look at that. Let's see if this works. Hopefully. Hi, my name is Emily Wilson and I'm a program manager. Kernel Ooh. Platform. Today I'm going to show you how fast Windows 8 start- starts up. So here we have a laptop and the Whoa. removed so we know. Well, fortunately. <laughs> Something gone. Oh, it was Windows Media Player after all. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. The only time something happens. Oh, one thing, Glenn. Yes. Don't forget. I know you're going to want to. I know you're going to want to um, put Windows 8 on your machines. But, yeah. But um, you might want to wait until Vid Blaster has okayed it. Yeah, possibly. Look, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about formatting my laptop, so I'll probably put the eight on there first. But uh, look. Yes. Yes. On a spare. Yes. 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 But <laughs> look, I'm going to play this video from the web. Look, I can't get get my my camera back. I'm frozen in time. But uh, <laughs> that bloody Microsoft. As soon as Windows Media play, and I, oh, fair thing. Everything else plays like oh, a shocking. dream. I know. It's bad. Everything it's so plays bad. like a dream. Okay, now look. I'm gonna try. I'm look. I'm gonna open this in because I have got this downloaded, and I'm I'm gonna persist with this. Here, have a look at the yes, at the space field. Audio audio listeners on the <laughs> podcast. Audio listeners on the podcast. If you hear a little bit of music and then back to talking, that's because we've edited the crash. <laughs> no, <there's, laughs> I've got to try and get this camera back, though. I don't know what's going on with the camera. Just unselect it and reselect it, and it should reinitiate. No, it looks like the bit, the, the media player has stuffed up the video driver. Um, yeah, that's Microsoft, we love you. That's why I use VLC. I don't use Windows Media Player. This one over here is going all right. Okay, well, I just tried. I just tried it as another thing. Look, I'm just going to play it off the website. Uh, hopefully, it'll play in the browser. Ah, oh, such is life, eh? Such is life. Thank you it's, for that. It's, no, it's a slow website. I know it's slow, but we can it's slow as all head get out. Well, well if, what happens if we can we can bring it up, and we'll see if we can play it. And if I just... Do you want me to play it from my end? Because I think I've got it up. No, it's coming. Here it goes. Okay, all right. Let's see if we can recapture. Oh. Hi, my name is Emily Wilson, and I'm a program manager in the Kernel Platform Group. And today I'm going to show you how fast Windows 8 starts up. So here we have a laptop, and the battery's removed, so we know we're at zero power. We're going to put the battery back in. And now we're going to see how fast Windows 8 starts up. I so noticed that I go. mentioned the specs on the laptop. And Close we're not. posting. It's probably got a probably a supercomputer computer in there. There we go. That's all there is to it. We look forward oh, to you getting to try yet, this love. out for yourself. But did you, did you notice in that video, look, I'll just take that back a little bit. But as soon as it started to boot up, there was an edit in the video. Oh, was there? <laughs> yes, let's see if we oh, can... deceitful little! I didn't notice that. Well, yeah. Let's just see if we can replay it. Does Microsoft allow you to replay stuff? Yeah, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> okay, I'll go. So, here go, we go. go to the, your refresh button there. Oh, I did. 
Hi, my name is Emily Wilson, and I'm a program manager in the Kernel Platform Group. As it's and booting, I'm going to show you how fast Windows 8 There's a little up. jitter. So There's an have edit. So laptop, and the battery's removed, so we know we're at zero power. We're going to put the battery back in, and now we're going to see how fast Windows 8 starts up. Here we go. See if we can zoom in on a clock. So here we go, <laughs> and we're posting. Just watch your fingers. Watch posting. Your fingers. And there we go. That's all there is to it. And, and then there's an edit. You're getting to try this out for yourself. <laughs> no, I don't it's think there is a an edit. Frame skip. Is it regular? Yeah, I don't think that's. I don't think Ooh. it's an edit. Well, we'll call it an edit. We'll call it an edit. Now, just just give me two seconds. I've got to try and get my camera back. I don't know what's happened to my camera, and I don't even know now where Logitech. Here we go. Why doesn't that work? Yeah, so if we can go into here, I can do that. They've got no background. They're good old crap. No, just your uh, effects module. Just probably remove it and re-add it. I don't want to do that. Or you should be able to just... All right, anyway. Look, we'll just go with this for now because it... Thanks, Mike. A Microsoft video a, must be Silverlight micro, off a of MSDN.com webpage played with Microsoft Windows... <laughs> media player just Didn't about work. crashed my system thanks <laughs> thanks for that all right now let's let's move on oh that was going to be my one of my best stories it turned out to be crap yeah, yeah. all right can't wait to, can't wait to get windows 8 now i know what it's going to do to my system oh. now okay now there's a few quickies here facebook's to buy out opera facebook is planning to take on google apple and mozilla in the browser war uh there you go of course the facebook phones may be coming out so who knows htc uh, joins Facebook for their phone project, as we were thinking. Codename Buffy. The phone would be Facebook's third known attempt since 2010 to develop a rival Apple and Google device. More oh. na more nails for BlackBerry, I think. And uh, yeah, no, this one won't challenge BlackBerry. God, just, oh, well, it's not going to help it. Who would buy a phone just for because it's a Facebook? Oh, phone. but it'd be more than that though. It's not going to just be Facebook, surely. Yeah, I know, but you're going to what's going to have a big F on the back. <laughs> <laughs> F you. Now, yeah, exactly. Now, talking about phones, Telstra has leaked its HTC One XL launch. Uh, video uploaded. Yeah, I love that. It leaked its own launch. I thought, yeah. yeah. Sure you did. So a, sure you um, did. a video uploaded by Telstra yesterday, show, or through the week, showcases the new HTC One XL smartphone and announces pre-orders are available via a URL. Now, that URL has been taken down, but by now, it's been put back up again. <laughs> But they did preempt it. They had to take it down. But then, they, then they put it back up again. That's uh, about as YouTube taking down all the Rickroll videos because AVG decided that they owned the copyright to it. Yeah, how stupid was that? <laughs> they requested a takedown notice on Rick Astley's song, and when since when did a virus company own Rick Astley's song? What a bunch of morons! Yeah. I'm down for 24 hours. That was just yeah, anyway. It's a whole other story, but <laughs> so, sorry. So the, this new uh, HTC One XL. It comes with the 4G compatibility and will launch in partnership with Telstra and its LTE network. The One XL is less powerful than its predecessor with a dual-core Snapdragon S4 processor. Ah, oh, so, Snapdragon. Oh. When you can take the stone from my hand, you're ready to go. I want the, I want the next dual-core to be called Trippy Tucker. And I the, want it to be, yes, good ah, idea. Ah, PZ. Ah, Trippy Tucker. <laughs> oh, I saw PZ. Oh, monkey. What about, oh. The, opera, what about the, the, um, the software? What would you want that to be called next? What are they up to? Ice cream sandwich. What's the next one? That jelly bean, is it? Or um, stinky dog turd? <laughs> no, no, it's got to be a dessert. <laughs> it's got to be there. Yeah, yeah what stinky what dog turd. <laughs> what a cream brulee. <laughs> so the One XL carries less memory with 16 gig compared to the One X's 32 gig internal memory. Teltra has announced the smartphone will be available for pre-order right now and is in store from June 5. What we do? Woo hoo! Now. Let's let's just get start going through some of these other stories because I've got some. Have you got any more, Eric or Will? Will, do you have any? Oh, what do we got? Um, oh, hang because on. I'm a science week show. I don't know if you guys covered this, but did you cover the uh, the fifty three thousand dollars a year for the Julie Gillard yes. blog? You did. Yes, we yep. gave that. We gave yep. that some stick. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We gave that some steamy dog turd stuff. <laughs> we gave it some sneaky, yeah, yeah, dog, dog, dog turb 1.0, we gave that. Oh, I got some older stories enough. Remember that it was recorded on, like, Friday, so. Um, 
there's I got one here about the uh, a not so much a problem, but a bit of an issue with Twitter. Um, apparently, you can't tweet a single word. Like you can't tweet get something because uh, oh, it's a command. Going back to the old MS DOS command, mm. uh, get was a, a search term effectively. So if you type in Twitter, you type something like get better, well, your uh, get will come off because it thinks it's a command. So but apparently mm. there's a few of these um, these implementations okay. in Twitter. There's things like you can type uh, set language followed by English, for example, or French or whatever to change it. You can type suggest and it'll return a list of results. You can type stats followed by username to get yeah, some right. information. Oh, okay. Um, there used to be a hack, and this is how the bots started to come about. We used to be able to type accept followed by username, and it used to automatically accept you as a friend. Right. So in the old oh, days... Oh, dirty, friend. dirty bastard. Yeah. So they've closed that one, but um, apparently they're leaving the get command like that because when you're using from a SMS standpoint it actually activates another list of commands so so it's something to be aware of if you send a message to somebody to say get bent well they're just going to receive bent yeah <laughs> what about if you say get you know in the yeah, dirty well, word they'll just they'll just get the dirty word now so, let's let's go quickly over or oh, will did you have any and i've got probably about two or two two more uh the only one i've got is about the uh the smart german 16 year old kid he solved a Sir Isaac Newton's mathematical problem that's been unsolved for more than 300 years. Um, basically, he's just some. He was an Indian-born teen. What does that mean, um, unsolved? And he said he just solved, hey, what does it mean? Un, what does that mean, unsolved? Well, I'll tell you in a sec. Okay, sorry. Um, sorry. Just <laughs> listen, Glenn. Listen. <laughs> the Indian-born teen said uh, he solved the problem that had stumped mathematicians for centuries whilst he was working on a school project. Uh, he won a research award for his efforts and has been labelled by a genius by the German media. Um, but he puts it down to curiosity and schoolboy naivety. Um, he explained, he was when he was told that the pro problem had no solution, he basically didn't believe them. He's like, well, there's got to be a solution to the problem. So he pretty much, um, he pretty much, Solved got stuck it. into it for the term, and yeah, he's not only solved the uh, what is it? What's the equation? Have you got it up there? Yeah, it doesn't actually have the equation, but it basically says Newton posed the problem relating to the movement of projectiles through the air in the 17th century. Mathematicians had only been able to offer partial solutions until now, and if that wasn't enough, he inadvertently solved the second part of the problem dealing with collisions of a of a body with a wall that was posed in the 19th century. Um, so wow. <laughs> this kid basically <laughs> out of boredom and nothing better to do during school solved two 300-year-old... <laughs> what, so no one else could problems. solve them? Is this true? No one, oh, I'm back. No one else could yeah, solve, no one else could been solve them. They've been partially solved, yeah. but they're saying that basically now his, uh, his solutions that he's solved... Um, are going to create massive changes in the field of um, like ballistics and things like that now. So Please. he's basically altered the way, <laughs> you know, everything we knew about ballistics and projectiles yeah, gonna, and stuff yeah. like that, fluid dynamics, it's all changed. We've got more to work with. All right. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Now, MBN, we've got a, I've got a little MBN story. You you go. Oh, I'm going. <laughs> eligible you users, go, girl. <laughs> eligible users in Toowoomba <laughs> have began receiving installations to the network. Those in Tamworth will be allowed to apply for a connection this week. This is a wireless trial. Now, I don't understand. Maybe you can help me with this this one. But the TD LTE network being rolled out by Ericsson aims to provide a service of 12 meg down, 1 meg up to approximately 500,000 premises. Isn't that slow? Can, well, when we're talking NBN. Are these um, well, well, yeah, three that's the entry level? He's faster. What why, is, would they, why would they build that massive infrastructure when four G is faster? Well, yeah, these premises. Yeah, but they probably haven't. They probably haven't got all the 
background, the back end switching done yet. So oh yeah, but it's still going to be cheaper. Just a bang of freaking tower up there. So the premises. Is... Well, yeah, but the tower's still got to go somewhere. See, four G is faster to the tower, but unless the tower has the infrastructure to pass that on, then your bottleneck's actually not the four G network. It's the hardwired infrastructure on the other side of it. So there's still no point just banging up 4G towers if they've got nowhere to put the data. So the wireless portion of the network has been built and trialled in Armadale for the past two months. MBN Chief Executive Mike <coughs> Quigley uh, reports a, reporting a total... <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> reporting a total of... Have a guess of how many active services in the town. Oh, in, 5 million, because it's a roaring success. And in Armadale, he reported to the Senate Estimates Committee that there have been 53 active services. How long has it been up? Well, Armadale, it's been there for a little while, hasn't it? One ISP uh, said it had... Oh, one ISP said it already had 40 users into Woomba. Oh, woohoo! Woo! Punch the air. Get the, beer, get get the champagne out. Get uh, the champagne out. Equipment will be installed on a total of 2,300 new and co-located towers. The network connects tri-sector base stations to a hub site with a 180 megabit link. From there... Of course it does. From there, the hub is connected to a fibre access point using a 900 megabit aggregated microwave link, which hands traffic off to a gigabyte fibre link connected to the nearest fibre access node. Do you think they could make it any more complicated? Oh, yeah. They could put some more big words in there. Holy crap. But wasn't there uh, something, I I heard a story through the week, that the speeds of the the internet by 2016 are supposed to be like, like more than doubled? What, what the MBN is going to offer. and pl- Yeah, but don't, I don't believe any of that. You know why? It, it probably will be faster. But look, I keep slagging off this government, right? But they are doing the right thing by putting this NBN in. Yes. The problem being it's the implementation and the execution and the amount of waste because they're so mm. inept at anything. Mm. The concept of NBN is a good idea. Should never get rid of it. I just wish it was someone else that was doing it, not them. Because... The NBN has the ability to do gigabit speeds. Yeah. Even though we're only getting 100 megabit now on it, when all they've got to do is flick a switch. Each one of those optic cables can run how many concurrent connections? Well, it's quite a lot. Oh, it's a, it's a Each gigabit cable, speed. I think, holds, yeah, like 10,000. And then 10,000. There's, you know, that's one optic link. And then there's, you know, bundles on bundles on bundles. Exactly. So, so you know, one cable that's all wrapped around together might have you know, 4 million connections all doing, you know, 500 megabits down and 100 megabits up. Mm. So, you know, at the moment they're limiting it because you don't, they don't really need it. But as time goes on, they just, just flick the switch. Yeah. So I've got no problem them bringing it in. So I don't think it's going to be an issue with, with um, I don't understand. Obs- obsolescence when it's well, by the time it's finished. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't understand. Unless what... this government stuffs it up. I just don't like reading about this, the low uptake. I just I can't understand why yeah. people aren't jumping for it. Like, yeah, I don't understand. I mean, but the but average it, person doesn't know about it. This was the issue I said mm, two true. years ago, back when they first introduced it. I said it's going to be great, but they're going to shoot themselves in the foot because they're going to wait until the entire thing's rolled out, decide nobody's using it, ditch it, and then advertise it. Mm. And not only that, will remember what we discussed before too. That what you said is what you're saying is true. But the other thing also is that they're rolling it out in areas where people can't afford it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You know, and forget to put the money aside. Forget the affordability aspect. They're putting out in areas where people have no interest in technology no. because they're all luddites and stupid. <laughs> well, not only that. I mean, you look. Let's get it's that going into Goodness, for example, and Goodness is still recovering from the flood. There's people who still can't get ADSL because the lines are still damaged. Yeah. So, you know, like it's it's not only you know it's not only they're putting in areas they it's can't afford it. Badly it managed. Areas... This is what I mean with the badly managed. Put it in areas like, for example, Varsity Lakes Glen. Yes. Right. It's the tech hub of the Gold Coast. Yeah. That should have been one of the first places they put it in. Yeah. Any yeah. any city, any university town, whether it be in Sydney, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Western Australia, they should have yep. put the first places they should have rolled them out were the university towns mm. because that's where innovation happens. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. But anyway, something you could use the MBN for when you finally get it in your area is Commonwealth Bank introduces cloud storage for their customers, NetBank Vault allows users to store up to a thousand files 
bowels and mm-hmm. vials. No, no. What are, they gonna, what are they going to charge you overdraft fees if you go over? <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> so they give you credit if you let other people use your storage. There's so no. If they, you lend them the files, do they pay you interest? Oh, I don't know about that. They, you, they might. <laughs> Extra but, space. But there's no. There's a thousand files, but no mention of uh, the actual um, megabit. At one kilobit per file, then it's fifty dollars. Yeah. $50 a week, like you, their bank accounts. You can upload documents, music files. Oh, that's interesting. Videos, and, and that's interesting. And images in an online virtual safety deposit box. Yeah. Come, yeah. come, You know come. what? The bank is the last person I would touch with my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Combank, I, I wouldn't, tr- I wouldn't I trust them. Combank introduced the service yesterday after a 5,000 customer trial. Unlike rival cloud storage services, which provide between 2 and 5 gigabytes of space before requiring users to pay, NetBank Vault does not initially specify amount of storage for users, but instead of works on the actual number of files, as we said, the service is available for free through NetBank Labs. Uh, Combank has promised to give customers 60 days notice should the service dis- be discontinued. So what does that <laughs> mean? Why would they even suggest that? Why are they even saying that? <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's a good way to market it. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? One thing good going for it, they've got more users than the NBN. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> so what they should do is give every, every NBN user who signs up, give them the free net bank. <laughs> well, then they'd be, have no one using it. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll, I'll find. Be, well, I mean, it's only useful if you're a uh, Combank ca- customer anyway. I'm not. Won't touch them. Don't like no, them. No, I won't use them. I might, I might join just so I can just upload a thousand files. <laughs> And just, just, just pirate a thousand files. <laughs> yeah, just store all your um, unmentionables up there. <laughs> now, Zero <laughs> integrates payroll for Australian businesses. Now, Zero, I, I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. X E R O. Zero, Zero. I think yeah. it's called. Or, or Dero, whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Zorro. Oh, Zorro. Zero. Zero. <laughs> zero. So, so, so I, zero. I just I called it Zero. That's how I first. Started pronouncing potato, it. Potato, potato. And then matter. now it's, I'm not going to change. So anyway, Zero integrates the payroll. Now, previously there was PayCycle and then well, Zero, if you don't know, is an online accounting system. So instead of you going out buying Myob or QuickBooks, you just jump on the internet and I think for the, the standard uh, package, probably 49 bucks a month, uh, you can uh, do your accounting online, which is quite good. Well, if I had my time again and seeing that this was out there now, I would not have bought my or or QuickBooks. I've been through them all. Uh, I'd um, be doing like this. QuickBooks is the pits. So is my Well, there's one called uh, Trade Accounting. That's Android-based as well as Windows-based, and it does everything you need accounting Milo's, software to do. And it's being, Milo's being funny. He put Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so Australia's uh, yeah, so Australian use of the software. Oh, are you still here? Yes, Australia's <laughs> Australian use of the software has skyrocketed with local user base doubling in the last financial year to more than sixteen thousand customers, a lot more than MBN, Whoa. making up approximately a fifth of the company's seventy-eight thousand strong user base uh, globally. Now this is available around the world. Now this is also another disappointing thing, though, is that around the world the pricing is different. Once again, we are paying the oh, most. It has to be. It has to be the exchange rate. Come on. But the but the, but the excuse for zero is that Australians are unique because we have a unique taxation system and that needs more work and blah blah blah. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, but and you can blame the current government for that. But it can't yeah. be any more what more the GST can't be any more complicated than the Oh no, the it's not that. It's not just that, Glenn. The, the legislation, there is um, currently something like 20,000 pages of taxation legislation in Australia mm. compared to the rest of the world, which is probably 1,000 pages. You're kidding me. I knew that. Yeah, I, I knew it was big. I mean, me, you look at every every year, if you've got, if you're an MYOB or a QuickBooks user, every year that before tax time, they always update their tax listings. Yep. Yeah, because it changes so much. It changes all the time. It budget time is mm. when it changes. Look, I uh, look, I, I I bought the the myob uh, without payroll because, well, as you know, or if you don't know, I sort of do some uh, book working for someone, and I bought it for them without payroll because I just wasn't going to pay myob three to four hundred dollars or whatever it is just to update the payroll every year. You know, it was just a mm. joke. So this pay cycle, well, I think it was paycycle.com.au, it came out at about twenty yeah. bucks. Uh, $19 a month, which was a lot 
easier. It was online. It was just e- tax tables always up to date. Super always up to date. Everything was always up to date. And uh, so now they've the pay pay cycle has been bought out by Zero. They've integrated it just this week, and now it's all one happy little family. And look, if you're if you're oh, thinking okay. of buying an accounting software, I would seriously think of doing something online. Like Zero seems to be one of the best. Um, there's other things out there that you can integrate POS POS point of sale applications into zero you can import it into zero which would save you a lot of time so you're not duplicating stuff you want to get to a stage where you've got one database and that's all you you don't want a database here and a database there and a database over there you want it all talking together so but anyway uh that's that's not an ad for them i just got excited about it yeah i was just looking on that website if you change it to us dollars it's twenty dollars a month if you go to australian it's it's 30 a month um, but what do you mean? So yeah, but that must be the bottom. Change. That's the bottom, bottom rung. The base plan, yeah. But that only gives you like five invoices a month or something. Yeah, Which, yeah, but I'm, and it's twelve dollars in or twelve pounds. So just you know, depending on where it is, mm. it depends on how much it changes. But yeah, I mean, was it PayCycle that offered the free? You they could, used to have a free trial account or a free you, base account, which was like five invoices. Oh, the, no, the pay, customers cy- or something. pay cycle did have free if you were under five employees. Yeah. Yeah. So that was so I noticed they've ditched that because I just went, I used to have a uh, pay cycle account, but it doesn't work in free. No, because so it doesn't work. So I must have ditched work. the free accounts. Well, well shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to log into it anymore, apparently, because it's gone to integrated to zero. But yeah, as we were saying, the price difference, just if you're interested, Australians, we'd pay $64 a month for the top tier option. New Zealanders would pay $56, US $39, and in the UK, $46, including sales tax. So there you go. So they Zero said the difference for the price difference between countries came down to differing re- different regulations in each country requiring unique functions and features. Now there you go. Maybe some of those 20,000 things. Now, a facial recognition app built on Australian design technology proposes to warn users when their photos appear on social networks, allowing them to track down unauthorised or unwanted photos from the sites. CQ, C-E-E-Q, uses sophisticated facial recognition technology developed by National ICT Australia, NICTA. Under a five... No, NICTA. NICTA. I NICTA. I NICTA. The coppers came in NICTA. Under the 5 million plus advanced surveillance biometric project completed last year, it's designed to help users find photos they are in so they can contact the owners or Facebook to get them taken down. So this guy, um, or this site, uh, created uh, this site uh, created by Abbas Big Delhi. Abbas Big Delhi. Um, last week. <laughs> I wonder if he's got a big deli. I don't know. He could be a... Uh, uh, Dom is Dom is good. Big Deli last week pitched the application to Facebook to help raise capital. If the social network buys, it might mean the the app would not be released for for rival social network. Now you can co- download a copy for free the application by registering on the Big Deli's website. So just go and uh, do that, and then they've got to send you the an invite. So look, I registered. I haven't got the invite yet, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But look, that sounds like a fair dinkum pretty good little app you know trace down if someone's uploading pictures of you like how many times you go down the street and you see people taking photos and you think to yourself well geez i wonder if that's if that's going to put me up on facebook somewhere oh, yeah. having my face passed all over the internet's a common problem i'm forever fighting you know losing a battle with that one yeah, you're, just too, too popular, too. you're just too popular will you're just too popular now the games uh who, who is this Bloody um, Nintendo, I think it is. The ga- Nintendo said that the, the yeah Japan arrests Magicon video game piracy suspect. So well, was one of five thousand. The games company said the case involved the sale of a kit designed to work with its DS handheld console. It said it hoped the case would discourage other legal vendors. Nintendo said police in the central Aichi Aichi region made the arrest. The case involves the sale of Magicon. Adapters which accept memory cards containing software. When plugged into the console's cartridge slot, the machine activates a special interface, which then allows the user to select the program to run. Now they say Magicon said, "Well, hey, this is just allowing the the uh, the, the user to 
run the software that they've created themselves. A yeah, good story. Although Japan outlawed the devices years ago, those found selling selling them did not face criminal sanctions until the end of last year. As a result of trade, as a result, trade in the kit continued. Japan is not the only country to target the equivalent. It's all going crazy. Uh, everyone's getting targeted. UK banned them in 2010. They were sold in the UK as R4 cartridges. Nintendo says there have been similar rulings in South Korea, Taiwan, Italy, Netherlands, Germany. Thank you. Any more? Anyone? No. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Well, I, ta- I take the silence as a no. We'll, we'll take that as a, as a negative. So that's about all we've got tonight. That's all we've got for this week. Thanks, Lounge. Thanks for joining us. And also... The one thing I quickly wanted to mention, sorry to be a pain. Um, I got my acceptance thingy for my Raspberry Pi. So I can now order one of the pies, which would be pretty neat. Mm. I'll have have a potato pie, please. (laughs) I'll have a slice. Um, The only catch is, of course, including because it's only coming from the UK at the moment, is... Freight, so it bumps the price. It's fifty bucks basically by the time you buy the device and freight. Mm. So it's now not- I've got the invite. All I need is the money. That's right. <laughs> well, well, but I do want to get it. I reckon it'd be pretty neat. So, well, when you get it, let us know. Let us know, and we can we can have a look at it. All right. So that's about all we have for tonight uh, and this week. Thanks to the TechWebcast.info replay of the show before Aussie Tech Eds at around about seven o'clock each Thursday night. Depends on how long their show goes for. If it goes for more than an hour, well, then they have to start earlier, don't they? So uh, that's how that one goes. So lounge live.thesecrethub.com, videos youtube.com forward slash the secret hub, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. Don't forget us. We won't forget you. See you, Eric. See you, Will. See you, mate. Thank you very much. See, see ya. See you, see you, Lounge. Oh, there I am again, swapping sides. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay, so that's it. So we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Goodbye. Woo. See you. Woo-hoo. Bye.